Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Market Huddle. Um, uh, most of you already know this. I'm Joe Lucy. I'm CEO and founder here of Secure Retirement, and I appreciate you taking some time out today. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about some overlooked financial consequences around required minimum distributions and what they can have on an IRA and a 401k unless we start planning early around them. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the ABCs, a little bit about what a required distribution is, how they work, um, start to look at how um, these can oftentimes turn into kind of a ticking time bomb um, that can create some real tax issues, especially in the environment we're in right now. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, some action steps that we can be taking with our personal finance to address them. So if you are somebody that has been socking away money in an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, any retirement account, for the most part, the money in these accounts has been off limits to the government as we are accumulating. The problem is when we turn 72, when we turn 72, that's when a required minimum distribution kicks in. And essentially what this means for you and your retirement planning is that Uncle Sam is now going to start to force us to withdraw money from our IRAs and 401ks every year. And they do that because um, we've been able to defer the savings in these vehicles long enough, and they finally get to start to tax these. Uh, in fact, I often say on the radio program, Uncle Sam is licking his chops. He's ready to get at this when you turn 72. It's the mandatory distributions that end up can potentially triggering uh, chain reactions of events, and it can end up costing you far more in taxes than you should be. And the worst part of that is so often we have families that are forced to take these distributions in their planning, um, and it's money they'd rather continue to let grow deferred. They don't necessarily need the money for income. So on this week's webinar here, this week's Market Huddle, um, we're gonna be talking about these required distributions and how they can be impacted and some planning you wanna start thinking about. Um, I think that we can show you some ways to, to save some headaches and, and, and losing some of this hard earned savings um, by being proactive in our planning. Nobody wants to be only reactive. We wanna be proactive. Uh, we wanna be able to make sure our financial planning is um, on our terms, not, not necessarily the IRS's. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the video off here. And um, most of you that have, been on our presentation before. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we got Bob and Cliff and Arlen. All right, so this is our disclaimer that we oftentimes have used, uh, basically, long story short, I'm not a CPA. I don't interpret tax code. We aren't attorneys. Um, we can't draft legal documents, and I'm not employed by the IRS or any federal agency but we are financial planners and we do help families through proactive look forward tax planning in our tax smart retirement program, reduce taxes. And a lot of what we're talking about here are these hidden uh, expenses, this hidden problem that I see around IRAs. Let's face it, for the most part, um, I'm gonna start with the ABCs here. IRAs are easy to participate in, your IRA 401k, 403b. We, we take a certain amount of our income, we put it and sacrifice. We, we, we decide not to necessarily take that trip maybe to Disney one year. And we put that aside into this account. And this account grows tax deferred. We get a deduction. We put the money in. We get uh, the benefit of tax deferred savings as the money accumulates. And then as we start to withdraw this money, it's only then that we get paid that we end up paying taxes. For many families that, that work with us here at Secured Retirement, they're in a situation that maybe a lot of the income that they need in retirement can either be offset by, well, sometimes families work a little longer, but even those that don't, um, by taking distributions from other areas. Maybe you have savings that can be a very tax efficient way to take money back. Uh, maybe it's through a pension or some rental income or a business purchase or buyout, anything like that. A lot of times families aren't necessarily in need of IRA money. And it's only at 72 that we have to start paying taxes on this. And we know prior to 2019, 
this number, this 72 number I keep talking about, the age of 72, used to be 70 and a half. It was through the SECURE Act, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a bit, um, that all of a sudden they started, they pushed the date that we took this out um, until uh, 72. So we, they raised it from 70 and a half to 72. I personally think that was a good thing. It's an easier number to, you know, they used to do this 70 and a half and every now and then we'd see families get tripped up uh, around that. So now it's a nice even 72. One of the other things that happened in the SECURE Act though, uh, again, I'll talk about this a little bit, is, is that they eliminated the stretch provisions, which would be beneficial to many uh, beneficiaries. So anyways, a required distribution is a certain amount of money that's required to come out of your accounts. And a lot of times when we talk to families about that, they have no idea what the percentage is. So I'm going to help you with that. Today, if I am turning 72, I will have to take out a little over 3.6% of my account balance. Okay. So it starts off at 3.6. Now the numbers are going to change slightly next year. They're actually making some modifications to the required distribution because people are living longer. Uh, that 3.6 is going to drop slightly. Um, it really is only going to, um, under today's numbers, at 74, I'm taking out a little bit better than 4%. Um, under the new numbers, it, at 75 is when I hit the 4% number. So what happens is that 3.6% increases slightly every year. By the time we're in our 70s, we're taking out four. By the time we're in our 80s, we're taking out five. And if you make it to 90, well, then that's 10% of the account balance. And that's based on the account balance on December 31st, the year before. So <clears throat> let's say that uh, Mary is turning 72 this month. She's turning 72 here on September 20th, today's birthday. She has to look back to her calc her balances of all of her IRAs and 401ks on January 1st, December 31st of last year. Then she takes that number and multiplies it by about 3.6%. Let us help you with that number because it can change slightly, but it's about three and a half percent, three point six percent. That's how much has to come out. Now imagine here that um I'm somebody that um doesn't need that money. If I've got a million dollar account and I'm taking out 3.6%, that's a $36,000 number, and I never needed that, that's where all of a sudden families start paying unnecessary taxation. In fact, it goes back to what I've always called the number one lie that we were told. Number one lie is this. All of us boomers were told the same thing. We want you to put the money into the account and take the tax deduction now because when you are in your working years, you're supposed to be in a higher tax bracket than when you retire. Well, with four and a half trillion dollars of stimulus, another couple trillion dollars potentially in uh, two to, to four trillion dollars in additional spending they're talking about, uh, low interest rates, everything else going on, my guess is that we are going to see many retirees that are actually in a higher tax bracket when they start to take money out of their IRAs than when they actually put this money in. In fact, that's not that uncommon when we start sitting down with families and looking at taxes prior to uh, retirement and after. Um, you know, there's there's talk that they're gonna raise the top tax bracket to closer to 50% across the board by the time we have uh, Minnesota taxes and federal taxes. Most of our clients are not necessarily in the top tax bracket, but the middle quintile that if you broke the, uh, all the taxpayers out there and you take the first lowest two quintiles, the, the, the first 40% of most Americans don't pay any tax whatsoever. When we look at that middle quintile, the next 20%, so between the, the middle 40 to 60% of the taxpaying population, when we start looking at those numbers, we're looking at potentially seeing families going from a 22% average tax bracket back to a 28% tax bracket, and that's if nothing else changes. So um, even though uh, the current administration is saying, don't worry about taxes unless you make a whole lot of money over 400 or 450,000, my guess is that middle quintile where most of our families, or great majority of our families sit, you're gonna start paying taxes and we gotta start thinking about how to prepare about it. First step, let's know how the RMDs work let my team share, uh, sit down with you and we can walk you through your own personal situation so we can do that. What's the next step? Well, the next step is 
I want you to think of your IRAs as a ticking time bomb. Your retirement accounts, again, we put aside the money. We were told we'd be in a higher tax bracket when we saved the tax on it. And when we take it out, we'd be in a lower. And many, many families are going to wake up and find out that they're actually in a higher bracket. It's because we've lost deductions. Maybe we lose some of the state taxes that we were paying. So that reduces it. Um, and overall, you know, there's two kinds of taxes or tax situations we have. The first is situational. The situation for many retirees is they retire at a higher income. They reduce their income uh, because their expenses are down. The house is free and clear. The kids are out of college and what have you. Um, so all of a sudden the expenses come down. So you would think that for most of them situationally, they could easily drop into a lower bracket. The problem is really legislative. Legislatively, um, we know that that with all the additional debt that's been put on here over the last uh, 18 months, and quite frankly, over the last 30 years, IRS is going to have to start raising taxes. So the legislative risk, your situational risk says that your income comes down when you retire, but legislatively at a lower income bracket, you could very easily find yourself paying higher taxes, not just as tax brackets go, but quite possibly it could be around other areas, higher Medicare premiums, a loss of other deductions. Uh, a lot of times around Social Security, you talk about stealth taxes. That's when you are taking Social Security that otherwise would be tax free. But because an RMD comes in and I have to take that money out, which I understand we would be taxed on, but it's not just the tax on the required distribution, but it's the additional tax it creates around Social Security. So somebody that's in a 12% bracket ends up paying 24% tax on the required distributions because they're being taxed twice on it. So these are the kind of things we want to make sure we're looking around. The sooner you get in front of required distributions, the better off you're going to be. It's the more options you're going to have. Um, think of this IRA balance. A lot of times somebody comes in in our office, they say, I've got, you know, a half a million dollars in IRAs. I've got a million dollars. I got $5 million. Whatever your number is, is what your number is. But we think of that as a balance sheet item. I've got a million dollar IRA, so I have a million dollars to use in retirement. The reality is every penny that comes out of these retirement accounts, the IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, has to be taxed at whatever the tax rate is at the time that we take the distribution. So if you're in a 22% tax bracket today and you take a distribution, well, then you're going to actually, for every dollar you take out, you've only got, what, 80, um, boy, 78 cents of every dollar. So it's really not all yours. A million dollar account in that situation, if it could only be taxed at 22, it's worth 780,000 in real numbers that we get to spend. The problem is what's gonna happen as we start to see that. Planning for this early on is really critical to it. It's what we start with when we're looking and working with families here. Let's start to look at where the required distributions are gonna be. So if you're 62 and you've got an IRA balance of a uh, million dollars, it's not the required distribution on that million that you're worried about. It's that if we are doing our jobs and your account grows to 2 million, well, it's 3.6% of 2 million. It says that you're gonna have to take out $70,000 and ask yourself, number one, am I gonna need all that $70,000? If not, we may wanna think about some planning around it. The second one is at what rate am I gonna pay tax on that? That $70,000 can create the situation where we pay higher Medicare premiums, pushes you into a, maybe a higher bracket. Even if nothing else changes, legislature is very likely gonna take that 22% bracket. It's gonna be back to 25 and you're already gonna lose a certain percentage just because taxes are gonna drift higher. So we wanna make sure that we help families with that. If you're a current client, let's sit back down. Let's make sure we got a good tax plan in place. Looking forward to what our tax is gonna look like down the road. And what's my IRA balance going to be so that we don't end up getting stung with excessive required distributions and being forced to pay tax on money we otherwise wouldn't necessarily want to take. I also want to talk here about required distributions and what's called sequence of returns risk. Now, sequence of returns risk happens when you retire during a correction or it's a downturn in the market. And when you retire, when the market is dropping, the combination of a market that pulls back and required minimum distributions can cause you to burn through your entire 
life savings way too soon. It actually accelerates things. Think of it this way. We have an account. I'm going to keep using a million dollars just because it's a nice round number. But if you have two million or if you have 300,000, it all kind of works the same. But if I had a million dollars there and we lose 20% due to a market correction through no other fault of our own, we had a, a you know moderate portfolio, maybe not uh, super aggressive that would have lost 35 or 40 percent, but we had one that's kind of middle of the road. It goes from a million down to 800,000. Well, that required distribution, it's calculated on the number of the year before. So in many cases, we could see how all of a sudden we have to take a higher percentage of that account out after the market correction. Now, the last two times we've had big corrections, the IRS has actually given us a, a holiday from our required distribution. So 2020 with the pandemic, they said we don't have to take it, but there's no guarantee that that's going to be the case. Worst case is a lot of times families are taking a certain amount of their IRAs just to, 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 to supplement the rest of the income that they have in retirement. That 20% correction can be absolutely devastating. According to CNBC, retiring in a down market can oftentimes mean two thirds less money for the rest of your life two thirds. So we want to make sure that we have a certain amount of our portfolios protected from market value adjustment, protected from the risk that the market has a downturn early in retirement and due to either IRA um, normal withdrawals that are used to supplement our income or potentially a required minimum distribution that could come into play that we're protecting our, our nest egg so that we don't end up with two thirds of what we otherwise would have had. We're talking here this morning about some of these overlooked consequences of our RMDs. Um, we started to hear early on with kind of the ABCs. What? It, how do they work? Again, it starts at about two point six or three point six percent. Quickly gets to four percent. It goes to five, and it's based on a year-end value the year before. The next area we talked about was painting yourself in a corner ending up with an IRA time bomb, having all this money accumulating, doing the thing for you that we all get excited about, it's growing, and then all of a sudden being taxed to pay tax on the money because even if we don't need to, and worst case in many situations, we're gonna see families that are actually gonna be pushed into higher tax brackets due to legislative risk, and then at the same time having an account balance that's grown, and now we have to pay tax on. Think of it as having a mortgage. If you knew the mortgage rate was going to be higher in 10 years, you'd do everything you could to pay off your mortgage as quick as you could. Well, your IRAs have a mortgage against them too. It's not to a bank, it's to the IRS. So when we have a certain amount that'll be lost towards taxes, let's start to think about how we get that paid off as quick as we can. We can help you with that. And then at the same time, making sure we aren't exposing um, all of your IRA balances to sequence of returns risk. Let's start to look for ways that we can reduce a certain amount of risk with money we need to take for either IRA distributions that are needed for income or potentially required minimum distributions down the road. So those are the first three areas. Next area I wanted to talk about here this afternoon. Let's talk about how we can reduce it. Well, really the best way to do that obviously is to pay tax today. It's about being proactive. Nobody likes to pay additional tax, but by paying an additional tax right now at 12%, 22%, even 24 or 32%, if taxes are gonna be going higher in your situation, um, you may wanna start to look at ways that we can do that now. Instead of paying or taking social security right away, maybe we should take our RMDs or IRA distributions early on to bridge you out to get a larger social security benefit, which is actually more tax efficient. Um, it's about identifying that there's a real legislative risk. We're going to see higher taxes. Um, oftentimes, that means moving money into uh, Roth IRAs. We can use LERPs, life insurance, retirement plans. That's another way that we can move money into something that won't be taxed. Or heck, you put this money in there in the first place to spend it in retirement. Take it out. Spend it now. As long as it's not going to uh, jeopardize your ability to make sure the money is going to last a lifetime. Um, maybe now is a great time to, to, to spend, uh, to, to do some of those things that you always want to do, the travel and what have you. Spend some of it down and as long as we aren't paying more tax than we need to, it's a good way to uh, start to look at how to uh, get rid of this potential time bomb here. Um, in fact, a good friend of mine, his name is Ed Slot. 
I'm going to talk about him in just a second, but Ed Slott's a mentor of mine here for the last 14 years or so. He has a book called The IRA Time Bomb. Um, he just really uh, recently reissued a, a new edition of it based on the new tax laws and what have you. And we've got him as a special guest coming out here in um, well, about 10 days. So I want to make sure everybody knows about that. And he's going to dive into a lot of the risks around excessive required distributions and these things that you want to think about. And he's going to talk about some of the newer changes. I'm going to hit on a couple. Uh, one was the Secure Act. Secure Act of 2019 raised the RMD age to 72 from 70 and a half. Uh, the sister bill um, is now proposing possibly raising it to 75. Now, that may or may not be a, such a good thing. Unfortunately, many Americans, given a more time, are not necessarily going to be proactive about um, trying to pay down the tax while they're still low. And I'm afraid that they're going to get a few extra years of accumulated wealth and then be forced to take even higher distributions at a higher tax rate. So we may want to um, see if that's going to make sense. But anyways, it's something to think about. Right now it's age 72. Let's make the most of it. If you're 62, that's great news. we got a decade to, to start looking at how to be proactive. If you're at 70, well, let's start to look at that. Of course, one of the ways, if you aren't going to spend this money yourself, after 70 and a half, I can give the money to charity. As long as it goes directly to the charity, it's called a qualified charitable distribution. And we can show you how that works. And that is one of those changes that actually didn't change with the SECURE Act. The 70 and a half qualified charitable distribution, giving the IRA money directly to a charity and then not being taxed on it is still an option. And they didn't change the age on that. Um, you know, America's IRA expert, the, the, the gentleman that we have coming out speaking with us, says the longer you put off taxes, the larger the IRA grows and the more that has to come out when you hit 73, 74, 75. So people could be facing much larger tax bills later in life as the accounts grow. And um, oftentimes the ones that get hurt the most are those that have been doing the right things up until now setting aside and, 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 you know, families that don't have a lot for retirement are not uh, necessarily in the same situation as the vast majority of you that are working here with secured retirement. So um, we also had some changes around the CARES Act that uh, makes some sense. We know we've got some changes with the calculations. I talked about that earlier on. They're going to change slightly next year. Um, if you really want to see what all these different changes are, the Coronavirus Act, the CARES Act, um, it's a good opportunity to kind of learn more about this would be to either attend uh, the special event we have, which we're calling the Tax um, Smart Retirement Summit. It's going to be right here at the Doubletree in St. Louis Park, not too far from our offices. Most of you know where the Doubletree is. It's it, back where our old offices were. And um, it's one night only. We're going to bring in America's IRA expert. His name is Ed Slot. And uh, he's going to be talking about this. We, I told him that, you know, we're, we're going to try to do the presentation. We'll probably open the doors around 6 and 6.30 is uh, when we'll start. Everything will be wrapped up within about an hour. But he's going to share a lot of his insight about some of the changes, talk a lot about potential tax changes, what it means to your IRAs. Even if you feel like you're up to speed on um, the planning that we are doing here at Secure Retirement for you, um, it's still a good opportunity to come out and, and just get some additional education. Also, that's, that's a fantastic event. A lot of families or clients have called us and say, hey, Joe, is this open to everybody? It's open to everybody. So bring a friend if you have someone you'd like to introduce us to. Um, and it's a nice way for them to get some education. And then, the, you know, there's it's not like a timeshare thing where anybody's going to be um, uh, it, the, the doors get locked and you don't get out the door until somebody makes an appointment. It's not that it, I want to make sure we're giving out real education, bringing out Ed Slot. So come on out and join us. Sit down with us if you're already a client. If you're not a client, I encourage you to come out and, and visit with us. If you are a client, have somebody you'd like to introduce us. It's a great event to do that. If um, you can't make the 30th, feel free to give us a call. Let's schedule a review. Um, you know, still about 80% of our reviews are now face-to-face. -face. We're back to uh, closer to, you know, where we were prior to the pandemic. But if you have concerns around that, we can always do a quick webinar. Everybody's gotten real comfortable with that. But if you can join us here on September 30th, it's a Thursday night, uh, bringing out Ed slide, call that number 612, I'm sorry, 952-460-3260. 
tell them that you'd like to reserve a spot. We have to limit this to 250 people. That's the most we can put in that. And right now we're probably close to 200 because of the social distancing. We've got to keep tables to two people, that kind of thing. Um, we, we can't have walk-ins on that next Thursday. So if you think you're going to attend, just give us a call. We reserve a ticket. If you got somebody else to introduce us to, we'll, we'll give you a four, we'll give you a six, whatever you want. But once we hit 250, we're, we're not going to be able to, to take any more. And I think we're going to hit that number. So with that said, um, if you want to look at your required distributions a little deeper, want to review the look forward planning we do with you, then give us a quick call and, uh, uh, we look forward, hopefully you can join us here on September 30th and see Ed Slot, America's IRA Expert Live. With that said, uh, let me double check that there aren't any questions. I don't see any questions. Does anybody have any questions before I duck off here? Oh, here's one from Jennifer. Um, uh, Jennifer, I think you're talking about the current three and a half trillion dollar bill that what they're calling the infrastructure bill and then the accompanying bill that comes with it. Um, I don't know how we're going to be able to have an event like this and not dive into what those changes are. Um, there's also, uh, you know, he came out, um, uh, the, the administration came out just last week with their proposed changes. Uh, again, you know, they keep saying that they're only going to, um, uh, that, that any tax changes are going to only impact those five families, which make it three, um, 400 or 450, depending on if you're married or single. I just can't see how that's going to stay there long term. Realistically, we know how that starts. They start with passing something that only affects those that are making um, a half a million or more. And then the next time through, they, they, they change the numbers and it drops it to 250. There's some proposals out there about making all distributions from Social Security taxable uh, or having a phase out. Maybe those that are in the lower income brackets won't have to worry about tax on Social Security. But many of the families we work with that are um, possibly paying extra Medicare premium, you're, you're going to be taxed on higher social security. So, so many different proposals. And yes, Ed's going to be addressing all of that, his thoughts on the current stimulus, additional stimulus, and some of the other proposed changes, the changing the age from 72 to 75. It's all going to be there. It's a very educational event and why we really hope everybody can join us because uh, we're really excited to have Ed out. I've worked with him myself for, uh, you know, I, I was trying to remember and I base everything on my son. Um, and how old he was, but I, he's right now 14. I think I was, he was probably two when I started working with that slot um, and, and I've had a great relation. We spend uh, 40 hours a year I spend going through additional education, which we're able to bring back to improve our planning with our clients and uh, to, to bring him on, I think is a real treat. If you've ever seen him on CBS and such, you know that he uh, uh, is just, a, it's a, it's a, he's been a guest on our radio program, of course, too. So, if you want to reserve the spot for Thursday, September 30th, give us a call. The number's right there on your screen, 952-460-3260. If you'd like to review your own personal planning more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, schedule a review face-to-face -face or, or, or uh, using Zoom or something, we can do that. Same phone number, just let... Uh, Penny or Terry or whoever answers the call that that's what you're looking to do and we'll get you taken care of. With that said, um, I hope everybody does have a great week and uh, hope to see a whole lot of you out there on September 30th. And, and let's make sure that we're bringing tax planning into our overall retirement planning. And those of you that work with us already are doing that for the most part. So with that said, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.